Hi, this is Michael Fisher for SavingAndInvesting.com and welcome to the Illustrated Leverage example. In this example we're going to look a little bit more about leverage and how it can work in practice when we buy an asset using debt. In this example, in the first example, we're going to look at what happens when we buy an asset for $100 that's purchased entirely through equity, i.e. we take 100 of our own dollars to buy an asset that's worth $100. We use no debt. What happens when the value of that asset goes to 120? Well, clearly what happens is that the value of what we own go, has gone up by 120. So we've made a 20% return because the value of the asset's gone up by 20%. And that's very clear. So our ownership, our stake, has gone up by 20% because the value of the asset went up by 20%. Now let's see what happens when we introduce leverage. In other words, when we start using debt to purchase that same asset. In this case, let's assume that we're going to buy this asset of $100 using 50% equity and 50% debt, meaning we're going to purchase the asset with $50 out of our own pocket, and we're going to borrow $50 to purchase the asset, as shown here. Asset of $100, debt of 50, equity of 50. What happens in this case when the value of the asset rises again to 120 and let's assume that in this case the debt doesn't change because this change in price takes place very quickly so we're going to ignore the effects of interest and even later on we'll do an example with interest but the effect of interest would actually be relatively negligible in comparison to the price changes we're talking about of 20 percent assuming that the interest rates are two or three percent but let's look at what happens when the value of the asset rises to 120 well we could now sell this asset for 120 dollars we could repay the debt of fifty dollars and we would end up with seventy as shown here so the debt is fifty the equity is now seventy i.e. what we end up with our ownership stake as the asset has risen to hundred and twenty what does that mean well it means that the asset has gone up by twenty dollars in other words twenty percent our equity has gone up by twenty dollars but that on fifty dollars represents an increase of forty percent so our ownership interest has gone up by a greater percentage than the asset went up by. The asset went up by 20%, our equity stake went up by 40%. We can illustrate the effect of leverage and the impact of debt even more uh, per, in a more pronounced fashion if we assume that we use $90 of debt and only $10 of our own money. So in this case we're going to purchase that same asset of $100 but we're going to use $90 of debt and $10 of our own money. So the example would look like this. Now what happens when the value of the asset again goes up to $120 and we sell the asset for $120 and we repay the debt of $90 then we end up with $30 in our pockets. So we bought something using $10 of our own money, we borrowed $90 to create $100 of available capital we bought something for $100, which went to $120, i.e. went up by 20%, but our $10 increased by 200%. In other words, it went up threefold. So as we can see, using with leverage, and with leverage, in other words, with debt, the percentage return that we see on our ownership stake, in other words, on our own money, is greatly magnified. And a lever is a mechanical instrument that we can use to magnify the force that we have. In other words, we can apply a small force to have a big impact. And the reason that this is called leverage in, in financial terms is because we've used a small amount of money, in other words, in this case, $10, to have a relatively big financial impact by buying an asset of $100. So we've used lots of leverage to get from $10 to $100. And then when things change, clearly our equity is affected dramatically. Going back to the same example of where the asset um, is, is, is $100, let's assume that, again, we take $10 of our own money and we buy this asset using debt of $90. Let's see what happens when the asset falls from $100 to $90. It goes down by 10%. Well, we can sell the asset for $90, ignoring interest, we repay the $90 of debt, and we end up with an ownership interest of zero. So the asset's only fallen by 10%, but our ownership interests, our equity, has been wiped out completely and has gone to zero. So we can see how using debt, especially high levels of debt when compared to equity,
it has great impact on what we end up with in our ownership stake. Now the most classic example of this is obviously the purchase of a house. Well, let's say we buy a house for $400,000 using $200,000 of debt and $200,000 of equity. Well, again, as the value of the house changes, let's say to $500,000, we can see how our equity changes. The value of the house here has gone from $400,000 to $500,000, which is an increase of 25%, and our equity has gone from $200,000 to $300,000, which is an increase of 50%. So we can see how, again, the impact of leverage had a great impact. And obviously, and if, and obviously, during the financial crisis in many countries, uh, including the U.S., um, there was there was a lot of there were purchases made with incredibly high lever amounts of leverage. So, if we look at an example where we buy a house that's worth four hundred thousand dollars using three hundred fifty thousand dollars of debt and fifty thousand dollars of equity, we can see very clearly that if the value of the house drops from four hundred thousand dollars to three hundred fifty thousand dollars and we sell the house for $350,000, our equity has been wiped out. And if it were to fall further, in other words, to $300,000, say, we would still owe the $350,000, and we would end up with what's known as negative equity. In other words, we would owe more than the value of the house. And if we were to do this using an example with interest, the picture wouldn't look that different. If we go back to the example of the house for $400,000, if there was 5% interest after a year, meaning that the 200,000 of debt would have grown to 210,000, then if the value of the house had gone up, let's say to 500,000, our equity would still have gone up quite a bit. And if the value of the house falls, our equity would still fall quite a bit. And we could do lots of examples of this, but the key point is that the more debt we use, in other words, the more leverage we use, the greater the percentage impact on our equity or our ownership interest. And this also applies in the case of a stock that we buy on margin. If we buy a $25 stock on margin using 20% margin, so in other words, we only put down $5 and we use 20 of debt, then if the value of that stock drop, goes up to, say, $30, then our equity stake doubles and goes to 10 If the stock drops to 20, from 25 to 20 our ownership stake has gone to zero. So as we can see here, as the value of an asset goes up and down on a percentage basis, we can see how, with the impact, if there is leverage involved and debt involved, the impact on our equity or our ownership stake is greatly magnified.